Let the, let the games begin. It's nice to see you here. It is so nice to be you, to be you here. Yes, how is that? We start well. Nuts today, we're doing walnut uh, burgers. It could be other nuts, but it is walnuts. We're doing Marco Polo pasta, which is a Julia Child recipe. Where's, yep, yeah, thank you. Love, Julia. Let's see, when. what is the copyright of this? What's, and I have, well, I purchased it in 81. Copyright in, um, well, no, her other ones were 61 and 70. Julia, nothing ever shook up Julia. <laughs> and that Marco Polo pasta, which is spaghetti, and, which I have cooked ahead of time. You know how to cook spaghetti. And I have coated it with a heavy garlic sauce. Yes. And then we will add lots of other ingredients to it. The nut burgers, you have the recipe. I'll make a mixture to show you how it works and how sloppy it is and how you need to add other things to it to make it a bit more firm. We will do the, we have white chocolate nut bark with pistachios and cranberries. One batch I made with the cranberries and the pistachios with the chocolate. So you'll be able to see that. And the other recipe, I made white chocolate and topped it with the pistachios and cranberries. Either way, either way. And then, I think most of you know the simple, simple recipe of peanut butter cookies. So I made those. One cup peanut butter, one cup sugar, one egg, one teaspoon vanilla. That's it. Now, I think I wrote on there 10 to 13 minutes. Well, it's more like 18 to 20 minutes of cooking. The egg isn't on the sheet. Oh, it isn't? No. OK, add the egg. One cup peanut butter. Yeah. yeah, one cup peanut butter, one cup sugar, one egg, one teaspoon vanilla, pinch of salt. Thank you for saying that. And bake longer. Now, I like my peanut butter cookies kind of dark. Other people like them light and squishy. Both ways are correct. <laughs> All right, we have here Jackie Barbeau that I called Vicky this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Not a problem. <laughs> and Peg Watson, who I call Sue. <laughs> Francoise Pietzner, I always have correct. And Faith Gruber. And of course, do we know Josh? Josh Drossel, our physical fitness. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, yes, Ann Craft. Ann Craft made the table decorations. Janet Rahab put them together. Thank you, thank you. When you finish, you are expected to have to ask him to help yourself to raw. Yum. Raw, peanuts. raw peanuts. Awesome. So that when you go home and there's a bag to put them in, when you go home, you take your raw peanuts and you plant them like a nice geranium. Yeah. <laughs> in the house now. They love heat. Oh, so heat. That has a register below the window, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then come after Memorial Day, you can move them outside. It's not so you have them to eat. It's because they make the most beautiful yellow blossoms in the world. So we'll have yellow flowers in our yards. Yes. Or yes. in our planters. Yes. But if you are interested in eating, then you just take enough and you take them home and you boil them and add a little salt to them and then eat them. Ta not the shell, the insides. Right. Yes, <laughs> yes. So help yourself to the peanut. Thank you, Anne. That is amazing. Where did you find this l large bag of raw peanuts? The peanuts came from Flea Farm. Oh, OK. And they're, they're in with the bird seed and things like that. They had some that were prettier 
and in a big plastic bag. But I didn't know if they would keep their fertility if they were in a plastic bag. Do the gardeners know? Any gardeners know? Do we have to keep these sorts of things open to the oxygen, or can we put them in plastic bags? I have no idea. Me either. Okay. So <laughs> Thank you, Anne. yourself and enjoy. Thank you. And also on the back, <laughs> on the back of your beautiful decorations, tell what's on the back there. That shows how to how they would grow. Okay. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Okay. Let's start making the nut burger mixture. We'll put nuts in here. And of course, if you want them to taste extra good, you toast them. Or not. It's up to you. So we'll pretend this is on and I'm toasting. And of course, the reason I'm doing this is to show you that I can flip them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kid yourself. That's all it's for. <laughs> all right, into the food processor, we will put a half cup of nuts. This is walnuts. Of course, you can use any nut that you have. Half cup of walnuts and half cup of seeds. I do not have half cup of, I think these are pumpkin seeds, but we'll put all of these in. And then we will add more nuts. How did I decide to do nuts for this class? I had so many nuts left from Christmas. You have them on the table there. <laughs> and the nutcrackers are from my parents and grandparents. Nutcrackers reminds me. This beautiful nutcracker for, I think it is black walnuts that are the toughest, aren't they? and hard to find. Well, it works. Wow. It actually works. Vernon Jorgensen, 201 West Vine, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. That's my dad. Oh, <laughs> oh nice dad. He was a nice dad. <laughs> OK, back to the nut burgers. We put in the, did I put in the extra nuts? Yes. Thank you. All right. A can of white beans. Most of the recipes call for draining. I want to use this liquid. And it says great northern beans, and I call them white beans, but it's the same thing. And of course you can use pinto beans. You can use any sort of canned bean you want. You could use pork and beans. That's what my mother would have done. <laughs> and some onion. And I double bagged it because the aroma. Yeah. This building yesterday smelled very aromatic. Garlic and onions. A little bit of parsley. Let's get, could you put some of the parsley out of there? Just a small handful we'll put into this. Dried basil, which of course I forgot. Let's put in some fresh. I'd say. Yeah, and grab some basil, too. We will have basil into the Marco Polo pasta, but I'm waiting until the end to cut it, because you know what happens with pre-cut basil. It turns colors. It doesn't hurt anything, but it is not as attractive. OK, basil, soy sauce for flavor. And again, kikoman, made in Wisconsin. Carefully measured, <laughs> one egg, okay. Now this is the trick. This is the food processor I keep in the garage. I watch, I washed it because it is hard to engage it to make it work. Let's see if I can do it today. I did, okay, here we go for a little while. That's it. That's it. Now, you can see this is kind of sloppy. And it does need to rest overnight. 
but in order to make it glue together better rather than having a sloppy mess on your griddle or a sloppy mess in your oven, you can add crumbs. And I like the panko, but I have used Rice Krispie crumbs, cornflake crumbs, but you know what works the best. And you know you have to use the scissors. It says tear here, it doesn't work with anything. <laughs> potato flakes, mashed potato flakes makes it thick quickly. So let's put probably a cupful in. So at least a cupful of crumbs or mashed potato flakes to make it thick enough to remain burgers. And this morning, when they were making these burgers on the griddle and in the oven, we had to add more mashed potato flakes. It still was not thick enough. So use your judgment. Does that make any sense? I didn't put any salt and pepper in. But I think the soy sauce, yes. Yes, and then more if you need it in the morning. I see. Okay, thank you. Yep, yep. Or if you do not want to make them in the morning, you can do it 24 hours ahead. The mixture is not going to spoil. But in the fridge because it has the egg in it. Does any of that make sense? Yep. Let me show you one of these. You have a glove. Can you show them one of these? Oh. They look like burgers. <laughs> I did a couple of recipes, oh good, and asked Anne to come to my house to taste them and see what she thought. We were both so pleasantly surprised. Anne, what did you say? I don't remember. These, <laughs> <laughs> it's, these taste good, yes, they do. And so I took two or three recipes and made my version of it. No, no meat, no meat. Okay, that takes care of the nut burgers. I picked up the buns this morning at Johnston. We will have the burgers here. There will be condiments. Now let's go on to the, yeah, I need the insert of that one. Josh, can you do, here, probably you're gonna need this to get the insert of the, the pasta. Insert. Okay. And put it on here. The insert. The, this? And disconnect, plug, unplug it. <laughs> it's a two piece, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You've got I'll it. I'll learn eventually. Where'd you want it? Right here. Vertically, yep. Okay, we can take the lid. Pasta. Now. I did not have to show you how to cook spaghetti. No. <laughs> no. And I did not have to show you how to saute butter and olive oil and garlic together. Now I do need somebody to dis Josh, here, see if this is garlicky enough. Just take it with your fingers and eat it. Or do I need to add more garlic? Pretty garlicky. Is it garlicky enough? A little more. Okay. Does it need salt? Yeah. Okay, so we will use garlic salt then. And we have the shaker, but that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. that, remember, it's only partially salt. Okay, we'll give that a stir. And keep, keep stay there, because okay. I'm going to have you mix together all of these things. What's the first ingredient added to the pasta? Walnuts. We have walnuts. What's the next ingredient? Black olives. Okay. Black olives. I did not need to cut black olives in front of you. You know how to do that. 
<laughs> okay. Red peppers. Red peppers. This is the kind. Yeah. Roasted red peppers. Now, of course, you can use the lovely red peppers from your garden and roast them and peel them and use them. Or, and if you have making a small amount, a little jar of the chopped pimento. I'll bet parsley's next. Yep. A lot of pasta recipes are mostly pasta with a little bit of other flavor. I wanted this to be other flavors with pasta added to it. And then basil, I think the easiest way is with the scissors, as soon as I find the scissors. Thank you. Now you can tear your basil, you can chop your basil, whatever you like. And what do we do with these leftover stems? Put them in the freezer and save them for stock, right? and the onion peel from the onions that are in there, and the parsley stems, and the garlic paper. Garlic paper. What is that what the outside of the, the, the skin is called? I think it, I don't know. I smell basil. You smell basil. Okay, and we have another one. I'm also going to put in there some chives. I had this package of chives at home and I thought that will also taste good in Julia Child's Marco Polo pasta. Why do you suppose, I'll bet in her cookbook, she says why she calls it Marco Polo. Now, I served this a lot when I was catering, but I do not remember her explanation of it. More basil, but I'm going to put in the chives. Okay. Green onion, and the, the color makes it a bit more interesting. And if it's a bit more interesting for our eyes, it'll be a bit more interesting for our mouth. And you can do long ones. I prefer the little ones. <laughs> Probably not whole. Okay, there we go. Yes. Okay, for one, I probably use two sticks of butter and a half a cup of or a cup of olive oil for this, and this is three. This is four. This is three pounds, and that calls for half a pound. Okay, yeah. so I'd still use a stick of butter and a quarter cup of olive oil. And if it's not, if, if the pasta still sticks together, add more fat of some sort. Because we don't want the pasta to glue together. There is no spaghetti sauce, wet sauce, to thin it out. It is like this. Can you do this with cold pasta as well as hot pasta? I started with the, no, when I cooked the pasta, I drained the pasta, I put it in here and added the garlic sauce to it. Rested it in the refrigerator overnight, reheated it this morning. Does that make sense, what I just said? Thank goodness. <laughs> okay. All right. We put the, we'll put the lid back on that. We'll okay. get rid of all of this. We'll save some of this for the... Do we do anything with the cheese? Oh, the cheese, yes. Okay, good. Ooh. Oh, gosh, thank you. I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> you are absolutely right. Classic Parmesan. And, of course, there's fancy Parmesans with flavors in. Yeah. Finely grated or the big holes go a lot faster. Could somebody continue grating all of this cheese into that while Josh and I go down to the chocolate? And you can use your, your glove and then 
just peel this off and then the fat end will be easier to grate. Mm -hmm. But to make it a little more cheesy, I have uh, dry grated Parmesan. And can we find a dish for this Parmesan and a spoon so they can add more Parmesan to their... What about this? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we will do. Sunday I'm going to make homemade pizza for the family. Ooh. They love that. And nut burgers. Let's see who's brave enough to eat one. I know my grandson will and my daughter-in-law. We'll see. Not my husband. No, no, he won't. <laughs> but as I've always said, he does not brag about what he won't eat. He just very nicely says, no, thank you. <laughs> okay. This is garbage. Any questions about Marco Polo? He, yes. The legend is that Marco Polo, after his travels in China, that's right. Um, described some kind of pasta-like food, and that that was the pasta we know as spaghetti that he brought back. Yeah. All right, thank you. Now we know. And maybe Julia said the same words, but now we know from you. All right. And, and I looked up this. I looked up garlic skin. Yes. Garlic skins. It's good. Yeah, and they actually make paper from those garlic skins. Oh, my so goodness sakes. I looked it up, though. I cheated. That's fine. That's good. <laughs> Next month, it's going to the last Friday of April, will be Kentucky Derby. Oh. Kentucky Derby. We'll do um, Kentucky Hot Browns, which is just an open-faced sandwich with gravy, and grits, but we'll do it with cheese and onions and lots of things. And then a chocolate bourbon pecan pie. Ooh. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Yes, yes, Anne. A hat. Did you? Right. And you know the, the most appropriate hat you can find at St. Vincent, perhaps, would be the, um, a bridesmaid hat, right? <laughs> and Anne is looking for those sort of fancy hats to decorate the tables also. Oh, yes, because, yeah, Jane at the front desk loves Kentucky Derby and has been there a few times and has a Kentucky Derby party. Last month when we did the lobster, I talked about the lobsters that that family always made for Kentucky Derby, but they did them outside. And no more funny things happening to Marilyn, but they have a pill at the front desk if it does, so we're in good shape. <laughs> it is good to hear. All right. White chocolate nut bark. I made that. Now here, oh, that's hot. Okay, you. This is some white chocolate oh, and enough. yep, okay. and dark oh. chocolate. Hey, that's job. okay. That's I'm right. okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Yep. Oh, that is hot. Yeah, it is hot. Are you? You want to put it down? We can just keep going. <laughs> Good for you, Josh. Good for you. Do we have, have the quick way? Do we have a nurse here for your fingers? Okay. No. I thought the chocolate, white chocolate, mixed together with the brown is perfectly fine. So it's kind of beige. Spread it out. <laughs> there are lots on the side. Oh. Well, there are lots. On. Okay. There we go. Thanks. Well, I spread it out on foil or parchment. Now, some of the white chocolate nut bark has the toppings stirred into the chocolate. 
Some of it has it like this with the toppings on top. Oh, I wanted to show you this. The little nut grinder, you can put it, and then you turn it over and it can come out. Now mother had this one. And of course, when she decorated our desserts, oh gosh, we thought that was so beautiful. I'm sure she used Christmas nuts or peanuts because they would be lots cheaper than any of the other nuts. This had been kind of wonky, and my husband said, I'll fix that, and he did. He really did. <laughs> I've had him for 60 years, yes. <laughs> I think I'll keep him. <laughs> Instead of pistachios and cranberries, yes. I have leftover, if you put the cash, throw some cashews on top, I'm putting some of this candied fruit from Christmas on here. I still have one fruitcake left. I always save one for myself for my birthday in June. And mother always did also, so that Marilyn could have her birthday fruitcake. It smells good. It does, it does. So you can see it does not have to be pistachios and cranberries. It could be peanuts and whatever else. But the fruity part kind of uh, compensates for the super sweet. Although this is mighty sweet, you know that. I'm going to rinse my hand. Wonderful running water. Ooh. And a lot of you know that your parents lived on a farm pumped the water, carried the water, chopped the wood, did the wood stove, oh my gosh. Mother was so glad to move to Chippewa Falls <laughs> and a stove in the house <laughs> that did not need wood and a faucet with water. Any questions about nut burgers, Marco Polo pasta, nut bark, and our easy peasy chalk peanut butter cookies. It's ready to eat. It's ready to eat. Okay, start, well you can start any either end that you want. It is all in one row right now. I'm not calling on the tables, you are grown adults. <laughs>